All right. Hello, dear humans. Um, this is going to be my first ever tutorial, so bear with me and pardon my English at some point if it might get a little weird. So let's get started. And we're going to make this knitting thing I made earlier. And it's made with Blender 3.0, the latest. So everything works if you use the same version. And let's start by deleting the cube and adding a path. And we're gonna want to make this one meter long. So let's just move it on the origin and then delete these vertices. And we have one meter long path. We can name this main path so we know what's going on and move it to a collection so we can hide it and then we make whatever geometry to add the geometry nodes on so it doesn't really matter what you make and add a curve curve primitive and curve line this is going to be our Y value <clears throat> or the Y direction knitting and the main path we just created is going to be the one that makes the pattern to X axis. So we need to change the direction. It's now pointing upwards. Let's make this zero and Y axis one meter. We'll be scaling this later as we go, but for now it's going to be just one. Now you can um, make curve the points so we see what's going on. Put it one. So we only need one point to make the first one, and then we're gonna adjust the other things later. Actually, I forgot to put this on so you can see what I'm pressing. Yeah. Anyways, so. Now we start making the pattern. We take a point instance that we instance from this point we just created, take the main path. So now it's pointing to the X axis direction. And actually what I like to do at this point is give it some shape. So take the curve the mesh which turns it in the mesh and we can now use a curve profile which you can found from curve primitives or you can make uh, your own one if you want adjust it more smaller yeah something like that all right <clears throat> so now we have this one meter long path and we want to do something with it and we want to do this to it. So we need to move it zero from here, one from here, minus one to this direction and zero again here. So that's why we're going to use the sine wave or sine math. Um, not sure what's the proper, proper uh, saying word for it we have to separate the x y z of this path we take position and separate the x axis and name it x so it's easier to remember and since it's actually one meter long we don't have to divide this x with anything we instantly get um, values scale from zero to one so it's really easy to work with it when you're working with exactly one meter or 0 0.1 or some like a certain length objects. I like using one because it's easier to calculate and multiply and divide. And so now we calculate the sign for it. 
And so this is a attribute math node. We use sine wave. And if you take on out your spreadsheet, you can actually start to see what's happening. Um, oh, sorry, wrong spreadsheet, yeah. Actually, for some reason, we don't get anything. Oh, we actually don't have, we only have two control points, so. Point instance, when we make the path, we can actually resample every curve we bring to the uh, scene. So we use curve and resample curve, so we get um, as many points as we want. And we're gonna use length because whenever we're gonna scale this path further we're always gonna have same amount of approximately same amount of vertices in it so let's use something like 0 0.05 so there's enough enough vertices or geometry to work with so now we see we're gonna have the sine value of x well, it's hard to see or read, but you'll soon see what happens. We're going to take attribute mix node and we're going to add for the current position. We're going to add something. Uh, we're going to add a vector value and place it back to the position. And we're going to move it Y axis up or down. So let's just place some number to see what's happening. And for the vector factor, we're going to use the sine value of the x. Now you start seeing what this does for it. So now we don't actually um, get what we wanted. We wanted to get this. So now we have to multiply this distance. So the sine wave gets to perform its full circle or whatever it does. So we take attribute math again, we take the x value and multiply it by 2 times pi, which is tau. And wow, voila, now we got what we wanted. We can adjust this later, but let's just put it for now like 0 0.5. Next thing we want to do is um, actually use the same idea, but now we want to start spreading the shape outwards from these areas and we have to basically now double the distance of x to get it um, get the same values two times so um, zero here one here zero here minus one here zero here one here and 0, minus 1, and 0. So, let's just duplicate these nodes again. And now we need to move it this direction. But now it's using only the one, one full circle, so it's only one and minus one here so if we multiply this by two we got this and that's basically oh All right, I'm back. I have this uh, sneezing scissors every now and then, and it takes like half an hour away from my life. So let's continue. 
So we got this shape that we wanted. And we're gonna actually start making a mess. So let's keep everything quite simple. And you can also use annotation. Uh, what are they called? Uh, markings on these as well. So you can actually know what you're doing with every node. No, that's not it. Right. Next we need to do is get this shape downwards. So the pattern lays perfectly when they're um, on top of each other. We can use the same principle again. Uh, pi cosine wave getting 0, 1 and 0 here. So um, we can just copy this math here. Um, remember to put the Y value and remember to change the X for Y. And what we need to do is move it downwards. And from testing, I know it's pi. So let's just type in tau divided by two and use the cosine. And now we have it and we can adjust it later with this one. Let's draw this one here. So you know what's going on. All right. So basically, we now have the overall shape we want, which we need to replicate then. We can now uh, make it a bit smoother as well. 0 0.02 maybe, yeah, that's smooth enough. And now the magic starts to happen. Since it's all calculated <clears throat> for one distance, one unit, whenever we scale this geometry, we actually get repeating pattern. So we use the x-axis and voila. So it's infinite loops. And now when we start adding the positions for uh, the points upwards to the y direction we get this and actually let's increase the radius as well decrease the uh, resolution so it's easier and let's put it something like there and adjust it as it should be. But now we see the problem because it's using a constant value as well to calculate the cosine wave to this direction. We actually need to, um, let's go top. We need to disable the, the Y for these paths. So they're all here when the calculation happens and then in the end we have to restore it back to the this, this uh, position. So what we do is we take the vector math node, we take the current position here and we restore it to posi position y and we multiply every other value but y value so this is now stored the y value of it is stored now in this parameter and then we actually do the same thing but the other way around so we multiply 
x and z but remove the y and let's store this uh, let's store this in uh, called um, no y and we use this this value now to deal with everything actually till this point so you might think that there's an error now but it doesn't have the y value so everything is now stored in the same position so um, now we need to add the y for the and we mix the current position with the position y and store it to position again and we need to add the values so now we get the original y value back now it works now we can adjust it so it's actually working always as it should so we can again use the length in which length of this y-axis it divides it and it's something around 0. Point. no is this it no I think it has to go four times yeah that's about right we can always adjust the scale of this loop so we get the correct correct shape all right so um next thing we need to do is um uh, we need to actually get the value before we change the shape so we need to get this kind of lines which transform into this one and it happens somewhere in the beginning so we need to take an attribute convert and take this position and store it to position line so this original position now with the scale is stored in the attribute called position line and this knit position is stored into position knit and now we can add a attribute mix node and we can change between the position knitted and position line and the end result is position that it's gonna be and we see now that these are the shapes that we have stored and um, I think this will be the end of this part or this tutorial I think I might do next the one where you actually tra transform between these two shapes but you can also start imagining how you would do it basically you need to do something with this factor you can use a texture or a gradient or a something to transform in between these shapes you can transform this position line before anything happens or whatever you figure out what to do with these values and then just use the factor so thanks you thanks you so thank you and uh, hope you didn't get scared and i try to get better with these tutorials later someday. Bye.